By the way, the uh, the story on Reince Priebus being on his way out comes from Chris Ruddy of Newsmax.com, who uh, is a very, very close friend of the Trumpster. I think he was there with the uh, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, uh, Shinzo Abe and his wife. And he's telling CNN that uh, that Priebus not doing a good job. And people think, my gosh, would Ruddy be doing that without Trump's consent? So there's another one supposedly on the block. Hi, folks, and welcome back. Great to have you. Rush Limbaugh kicking off a brand new week of broadcast excellence here on the Excellence in Broadcasting Network, the most listened to radio talk show in the country. All right. My bad. I just found out that the Trump press conference is uh, is it that little prime minister from Canada, Justin Trudeau. So we're not going to jip that. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to jip that till I get to the questions. If it were just you know a Trump standalone, we'd be there. But since it's a joint presser with uh, with with uh, with Justin Trudeau, what did I say? Did I? Justin Trudeau, what I said, Justin Leonard? It's Justin Trudeau. He's he's the son of Margaret Trudeau, who is just as crazy as he is. And uh, and his father, of course, makes three. But I I didn't see that at first, so I'm just letting you know that we're gonna jip it still, but when they get to the questions after the actual joint press statements and so forth from both Trudeau and uh, Trump have finished. Now, I am being told that Chris Ruddy of Newsmax.com is slightly walking back his criticism of Reince Priebus. Uh, it, it seems to be a little bit of a backtrack. Uh, Ruddy Twosta posted yesterday on Twitter that Reince just briefed me on new White House plans. Impressive. CNN Today were my personal view. I told him I have open mind based on his results. So, whereas it initially looked like, I mean, look, Ruddy is a very, very close friend of the Trumpster. They're almost inseparable out there. So when Ruddy starts ragging on Reince Priebus, people start thinking that that's actually Trump. If Trump doesn't slap Ruddy down, and people think, man, Trump's getting ready to get rid of Priebus. So Ruddy walks it back a little bit and tells, no, it was just my own thoughts when I was on CNN. Reince has now shown me White House plans. They look very good to me. So I guess Ruddy is going to tell Trump that Priebus's plans look good. No, and that and that means that Priebus will be safe. Well, I mean, this is how the media reports this stuff. Because Trump, of course, he's not... I think they're getting ready to say that Trump is almost like Reagan. He's asleep half the time, taking naps, and all these other guys are running the show. And then they're going to report that, and Trump's going to get mad that everybody thinks he's not there, that all these other guys are running the show, and he'll fire all of them. I mean, that's the media. That's what they're trying to do with Bannon, putting Bannon on the cover of Time magazine as the de facto president. Clearly a psyops operation, trying to make it look like they, they, they think Trump's going to be sitting there wherever he reads Time. What? They think Bannon's president? Well, I'll show them, and he fires Bannon. Then the next thing he sees is that Reince Priebus, somebody thinks Reince Priebus is doing a bad job, but Trump doesn't know that. So they got to get rid of Reince. And and this is how the media, I'm, they are playing it this way. In uh, It's laughable. I, I just... It, 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 they paid no attention, really didn't. They paid no attention to Trump during the campaign, and they paid no attention to Trump's statements and his agenda, and now that this stuff is starting to be implemented, they're aghast. Okay, okay, so I just got an email. I got lots of emails. I just saw it. Do you think, do you think Priebus is in trouble? No, folks, my whole point, I don't think Bannon's in trouble, and I don't think Priebus is in trouble. This is all manufactured stuff. Here. The first, the first headline I have is uh, the left's grand plan for Steve Bannon, divide and conquer. The point here is this, uh, j just to reiterate, Time Magazine cover story on Bannon, the real president in hiding. And they know Trump's ego, or they think they do. This is that they don't know Trump at all. And this is what's fascinating to me. 
They had every chance in the world to get to know Trump. All they had to do was actually pay attention at his rallies instead of sitting there as a bunch of elitist, condescending people holding everybody there in contempt. If they would have just sat there and listened, none of what Trump's doing today would surprise them. It's the agenda being rolled out. Uh, the fact that Trump's voters have not abandoned him. There's no mystery to this. This is exactly what they expected to happen. Everything's on schedule. It's the Republicans on Capitol Hill that that may have some explaining to do uh, with all the talk about delaying Obamacare. None of the president threw in on that, too. And the tax cuts don't seem to be happening as quickly as, as were indicated. That's where fault lines lie. So the media doing the story on Bannon being the real president, what the purpose of that is, they think they can undermine, they think they can under Trump's skin. They really think that they can force Trump to fire Bannon out of jealousy. They think Trump is so insecure. And I to, it, it, for, to think like this, that somebody like Trump is insecure, you have to have experience with something. You, I would think many of the people leveling this charge maybe suffer similar insecurities. And are simply projecting. Because the theory is, if you go out and build Bannon up, and you talk about how he's the real brains, and he's the real policy guy, then Trump's supposed to sit there and start steaming that people think he's not in charge, that people think he's not in control, that people think he's not number one. And they object, okay, walk in, Steve, I'm sorry, everybody thinks you're running a show and I can't have that, you're gone. And then the same thing with Priebus. And here's this Chris Ruddy of Newsmax, who is very close, very tight with Trump, who goes on CNN and 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 uh, basically said that, uh, uh, well, things are not cool. Uh, Priebus not doing a good job. Trump not happy. Well, people say, well, Ruddy is very tight with Trump. Ruddy, I can't imagine Ruddy going out and saying something like that without Trump knowing. So then the media says, so obviously Trump sent Ruddy out to say that, which means that Priebus is next to go. And that's what they want you to think and everybody else to buy. But none of this is coming from Trump. Have you noticed it? None of it's coming from Trump. You hear about it in the media either on the cover of Time or from Chris Ruddy, supposedly, who then walked back a little bit his tweet, because he tweeted again yesterday that he had since met with Priebus. I mean, this is kind of strange, too. Here's Chris Ruddy of Newsmax saying he met with Priebus, the White House chief of staff. And when Priebus explained the policy agenda, that Ruddy was comfort. Oh, OK, that's better. As though Ruddy is a de facto Trump. So Trump via Ruddy was worried about Priebus. But now that Ruddy thinks it's okay after having talked to Priebus, I guess Trump's not going to fire. This is all absurd. And this is what you get when the left really has nothing but psychological operations and warfare type things to try to make you think that this White House is so maladjusted and so incompetent, so unqualified, that nobody knows what's going on over there. And they're led by this jealous egomaniac who's as insecure as the day is long. All of this is totally made up, like the fact that all of these rioters and protesters represent the majority of America is totally made up. And I find it, as I say, I think it's it's just interesting that this is the best they've got. It's the best they've got. And it's, it's a continuation, in fact, of Hillary's number one reason to elect her. And that is Trump's not fit, Trump's unsuited, Trump's mentally deranged. And how did that work out for Hillary? And they think that this is going to separate Trump supporters from Trump is a key thing they have forgotten. The media didn't make Trump, and that means they can't destroy Trump. If you let the media make you, if you are who you are, if you're big, big name, lots of fame, success, because the media says you are, well, they can cancel you out anytime they want, but the media has nothing to do with Trump's success. Literally nothing. There's nothing they can do, but they don't understand that. I really, I don't think there's anybody in media that has a better understanding of Trump supporters, who they are, and why they support Trump, and what it would take for fissures to appear. But the media 
And they're getting more deranged. Now, Bill Maher and now half the left is out there talking, you know, we really think Trump's insane. We really think Trump's mentally unstable. We really think psychologically Trump may be very, very mentally, mentally uh, unbalanced. It really is despicable stuff. But that's all they've got. Quick timeout. We'll be back with more after this.